In this session, we will be talking about the buffer system of the body. So, what are your buffers? The buffers are system various mechanisms by which the body tends to keep a balance. Okay, body tends to keep a balance. Between it can be anything. It can be your pH. Okay, it can be your uh, secretion of your chemicals, chemical buffers. Okay, it can be your oxygen, carbon dioxide buffers. Means it prevents anything from going extreme. Okay, prevents your extremities. We'll see how it works. The buffer system in the human body are extremely efficient and different system work at different rates. The chemical buffers, they work very fast to adjust the pH. Whereas the respiratory buffers, they take uh, around some few minutes, still more time to adjust your oxygen carbon dioxide balance in the body. Your renal buffers, the renal system, they can also adjust the blood pH through excretion of hydrogen ions and conservation of bicarbonates plus this process can take hours to days to have an effect. Basically, you have to manage your chemical buffers, you have to manage your acid base balance and lastly, you have to manage your oxygen carbon dioxide buffers. Okay. Buffers prevent excessive excretion of your yeah, outward movement of your oxygen, excessive Absorption of your carbon dioxide prevents all that, maintains a balance in your body. Okay, the chemical buffers takes place very fast, they require only seconds, whereas the respiratory buffers action takes some about few minutes, and the renal buffers they take hours to days to have an effect. Now, what are the major buffers of the body? You know, cells have intercellular and extracellular fluid. In your intracellular fluid, it is your proteins and the phosphate buffers. Whereas in your extracellular fluid, the major buffers is your bicarbonate buffer system and the minor buffers are your intracellular protein and phosphate buffer system. Okay. Important, the buffers in your blood, the major buffers are your bicarbonate buffer system and your hemoglobin. Whereas the minor buffer system, they are your plasma proteins and phosphate buffer system. In your renal system or urine, major buffer is your ammonia and your phosphate okay so we'll see how it works proteins they are made up of amino acids as you all know okay they have positively charged amino acids and negatively charged carboxyl groups okay positively charged amino acids and negatively charged carboxyl group acids and bases the charged region of these regions can bind hydrogen and hydroxyl ions thereby binding functioning as a buffer Okay, basically, you have H plus and OH minus. If H plus ion increases, your pH decreases. And if OH ion increases, your pH, you know, increases, the value increases. Okay. Now, this accounts for two-thirds of the buffering power of the blood and most of the buffering within the cells. So, this is your major buffer. Accounts for two-thirds of the buffering power of the blood. Next is your hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a principal protein inside your red blood cells and account for one third of the mass of the cell. During conversion of carbon dioxide into bicarbonate, hydrogen ions are liberated that is carbon dioxide combines with water to form HCO3- minus and it releases a H+. Plus. This H+, plus is absorbed by your hemoglobin. Okay, we will see how it does. During conversion of carbon dioxide into bicarbonate, the hydrogen ions are liberated or buffered by your hemoglobin, thereby reducing dissociation of oxygen. Okay, it absorbs your hydrogen ions. This buffering helps in maintaining the normal pH. Okay, it prevents free H plus ions roaming in the blood. This process is reversed in the capillaries to reform carbon dioxide, diffusing into the air sacs to be exhaled into the atmosphere. It takes place in your lungs. Phosphate buffer. Phosphates are found in your blood in two forms, sodium dihydrogen phosphate which is a weak acid and sodium monohydrogen phosphate which is a weak base. Okay. These are found routinely found in your blood. When your weak acid that is sodium dihydrogen phosphate 
comes in contact with a strong acid such as HCl, base picks up second hydrogen ion to form a weak acid and sodium chloride salt. Basically, your chemistry. Okay. When your this base comes in contact with a strong acid, base picks up your hydrogen from the acid to form weak acid and a salt. When the weak acid comes in contact with a strong base such as NaOH, the weak acid reverts back to the weak base and produces water. Basically, a chemical reaction. This is how your phosphate buffer works. Now, we discussed about your hemoglobin. It is found in your RBCs. So, let's see. In your tissues, tissue metabolism and everything, carbon dioxide is present. This carbon dioxide reacts with water to form bicarbonate. This bicarbonate dissociates into hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ions. This hydrogen ion is absorbed by your hemoglobin to form hydroxyhemoglobin. Okay. So, it absorbs your free H plus ions. In your RBC, when it reaches your lung, you know, it has to pump out your carbon dioxide back outside. So, this HHB, hydroxyhemoglobin, combines with oxygen that is abundant to form HBO2 and H plus ions. This H plus ions combine with bicarbonate form carbonic acid and this releases your carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. That is how the hemoglobin acts as a buffer. There is something called as chloride shift which is very important. We discuss this reaction. It's carbon dioxide it combines with water to form carbonate. Carbonic acid releases your H plus and forms your bicarbonate ions. Okay. Now, this goes outside. It is pushed outside of your cell and the chloride is coming inside. If there is acidosis, okay, your bicarbonate ion, it is pushed outside the cell and to create a balance, your chlorine ion is shifted inside and this is called as chloride shift. Okay, this is very important phenomenon that is happening inside your RBC. The buffering action in your kidney, you know, kidney consists of, you know, there is some tubule, your Bowman's capsule, your ascending tubule, your descending tubule and everything. Then, so, this tubule has tubular cell, tubular lumen and there is blood capillaries. So, what is happening in your tubular lumen is, your bicarbonate ion combines with hydrogen ion to form carbonic acid which dissociates into water and carbon dioxide which then goes into your tubular cell. Again, this reversal act takes place in the presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme. This water and carbon dioxide forms your carbonic acid which again dissociates into your H plus and HCO3 minus. This HCO3 minus is reabsorbed in your blood, okay, thereby restoring your base. It prevents your acidosis. And when your HCO3 minus is reabsorbed, your carbon dioxide is, you know, pumped out into the lumen and it is excreted via your urine. This is how your renal buffer takes place and it takes, it requires days or hours for its action, okay. The bicarbonate is regulated by the blood, by sodium, as are the phosphate ions. When sodium bicarbonate comes in contact with a strong acid such as HCl, carbonic acid, this is a weak acid and NaCl are formed, similar similar reaction. When carbonic acid comes in contact with a strong base, such as NaOH, bicarbonate and water are formed. Okay. So, you have to remember basically, what are, you know, the list of buffers which are present in different systems. Okay. The time taken, you know, how the renal ions takes days, the respiratory takes minutes and the cellular ones takes, chemical buffers take very quick action it takes only seconds for its action. You have to learn what is chloride shift and how the hemoglobin acts as a buffer. Okay.